Hello, this is Doug Johnson. I'm here to show you how to set up a financial consolidation. The scenario that we'll be illustrating is this one. We have uh, a main company and a German subsidiary. The main company has a base currency of US dollars. The German subsidiary is based in euros. Uh, you can see that I'm running two different systems in terms of the actual uh, builds that are involved. You don't need to have the same system to run a consolidation scenario. Uh, but then in the main company, I've started with the demonstration data. Setting up the subsidiary was a little more difficult because I started with no data. I wanted to create a company with a base currency of euros. The ultimate goal of what we're doing is to create this report that you see where I have different columns, one for the USA contribution, one for the Germany contribution, and a calculated column that shows the uh, consolidation. To do the process, I'm going to walk you through a, a few different steps. So to get started, let me open up uh, the subsidiary where I have to f start by activating the company, uh, creating the financial periods, and then of course uploading a chart of accounts. So when I first started with the system, I was uh, with a blank system. I had to go in and activate uh, several features. Uh, for this particular instance, I had to activate branch accounting, and then it was important that I had multi-currency accounting as well as sub-accounts. Uh, the sub-accounts are required uh, because I have sub-accounts in my main entity. Once I had activated that, I was able to go in and create a set of financial periods in the general ledger. Uh, fairly simple and straightforward to do that. Um, I started by creating a financial year. After I created the financial year, my next step was to go ahead and upload a chart of accounts. I'm not going to take you through everything that I did right here, uh, but it was pretty easy because I went to one of my other companies and downloaded the chart of accounts and then simply used the upload feature to upload this particular one. So at this point, we were able to activate the company and we were able to upload our chart of accounts. To create the currencies, I had to go into, once again, my subsidiary. So let me pull that up and you create the currencies in the currency management area. So in the setup, I go to the screen called currency and I would set that up the different currencies that I had. Of course, this explains why I had to do the chart of accounts first because I had to enter the accounts and sub accounts uh, into these screens to get those currencies created. And you'll see the next step in my process here is to go ahead and create the uh, two ledgers, one for the reporting ledger and one for the actual ledger. So let me go over to my general ledger and pull up my ledger screen and you can see what I entered here. I created an actual ledger in euros and a ledger, a reporting ledger that I'll be using for my translations in US dollars. Within the main entity, I created a ledger for reporting purposes. This is not something you have to do, I just elected to do it. So let me show you what I did in this particular case. In the general ledger module, set up area into ledgers, and I created a ledger ID called Germany that I was going to use for my consolidation. Once I've got everything established, my next step is to go in and set up the consolidation. Once again, this occurs in my main entity. Uh, so you'll see that there's this screen called setup for consolidation. Within the consolidation setup, uh, I've created two examples. Consolidation ledger that I just created. I called it the consolidation unit of Germany. Then I had to enter my username and my password from my subsidiary company, as well as enter the URL. At that point, I go use a synchronize function. The synchronize function makes sure that all of the chart of accounts from your main entity, as well as your from your subsidiaries, are uh, synchronized and passed to one another. After I've done that, I then can go in and find the source ledger that I'm going to use from my subsidiary and enter that, as well as fill out and start and end periods. Uh, at this point, I've been doing some work in the system. So once I've set up my consolidation, I went back to the subsidiary uh, to map my consolidation accounts in the chart of accounts. So let me go show you where this occurs. You'll see that I have um, the my standard chart of accounts, but in this case I've listed a whole bunch of consolidation accounts. Once you've done the synchronize, it makes all of the accounts 
in the main entity available to do a consolidation into. In this case, I took the easy way out and simply exported to Excel, copied and pasted everything in and re-imported it. But you could get much more uh, strategic with your mappings. The same thing occurs on the sub-accounts. In that particular case, I go into the configuration common settings in my segment values for the uh, sub-account segment. And you'll see I can map values of my seg segments to the mapped value uh, in my consolidation. So after I've done that, I went into the subsidiary and entered a couple transactions. Uh, let me show you for the video what I went into the subsidiary to create. Uh, I didn't do anything too fancy. I uh, simply went into the general ledger and went to the journal transactions and posted a simple journal entry. Uh, once I had done this, uh, it then became available and I verified it in my account summary report uh, so that you could see within my reporting period that that had been created. By closing the period in Acumatica, you prevent further transactions, or you have the option to prevent further transactions from coming in. So once that was done, I was ready to go create my currency translation. Uh, so let's go show that now. Once again, that's in the subsidiary. So I went into the, the, uh, the currency management area, and I prepared a currency translation. Uh, this one I did for this particular period. I set up the US translation ID uh, under my translation definition. Uh, you can see that I've set that up uh, so that it takes things from my actual ledger, converts it to my US dollar ledger, uh, and I've basically just gone from all accounts and sub-accounts. I haven't been too specific about what I'm doing. So if I go back here once again to my prepared translation, uh, once I run that, uh, I get the uh, I get a batch that can then go ahead and be released. So I've already done that in this particular case, uh, and it created the journal transaction for the entry. And then you'll see that if I go back to my account summary screen, that once that was done, there's what my uh, translated account summary looks like. So now I'm ready to begin my uh, consolidation. And I take my consolidation area, import the consolidation data. Uh, in this case, I did it using Germany, but I could have done it using another one. Uh, once that was finished processing, it creates uh, a batch transaction that I then have to go release uh, that would appear on this particular screen. And then that batch transaction, you can see, uh, it will actually appear within my journal transactions area. So this is the, the batch that got created as a result of that. Uh, you can see it was in my Germany ledger, which is just a reporting ledger. So the final step is to just go ahead and run the consolidated report to make sure that everything works out. So I go into my report definitions. I created a special report for this particular situation. Uh, I called it my multi-entity balance sheet report. I did this by modifying the column set. I started with my standard balance sheet. I added a couple more columns. Um, and in my other two columns, you can see one uh, I used for US, one for Germany, and one for the consolidated report, was, which was simply a calculation of the column B plus column C. Uh, and down here, I was able to easily go in and specify which ledger I wanted to pull. Uh, in this particular case, I just wanted to do turnover, which is the actual amount of things that occurred in that period. So I'm not going to go uh, do like an ending balance or a starting balance. I modified an existing report. And if you go, we'll be able to see what it looks like. The period in question was uh, July. So I can go run that. And there's the result of my report.